Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Um, so we are going to be breaking down the dev diary here today, um, specifically the dev diary with the Emperor patch notes. So it's very long winded. It's a long episode. I'm going to leave some tags in the in the pinned comment down below in the description. So if you're excited to see specific moments, specific information, I'm going to get all of the big major headers down there with timestamps. So you can click through there. Um, but I would encourage you to look all the way through it if you might learn something you didn't know. Um, also, we have a multiplayer event coming up this weekend over on my Twitch channel, so make sure that you follow that Twitch channel. Uh, and uh, it's, it's twitch.tv forward slash Chewy Shoot. Um, there's going to be a lot of great content over there. Zlevik, my buddy Quagrasol, Corbett, um, Provis is supposed to be in there, Mordred Viking, Grugi, tons of people. Tons of people. It's going to be awesome. Also, join the Discord. I have a great community Discord. And uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, that is going to be linked below as well. But most importantly, if you guys appreciate these sorts of dev diary reads, leave a like. Let me know. I definitely want to make sure I'm making content you guys enjoy. So leave a like below. I appreciate that a ton. And subscribe. Subscribe if you haven't. Ding the bell. It'll send you a notification when we upload. Let's get into the review. Part of the expansion features, golden bulls that uh, will allow the Curia to affect the entire fate. These seem really cool. Um, they're situational, and um, we did talk about them a little bit in our definitive guide episode on um, religion. So make sure you check that out because there's there's we did go in pretty good detail about this stuff. The Pope can now appoint cardinals in other countries or within his own, so he can show favor um, and potentially even prop up nations within the Curia. So might be good, especially in multiplayer. For those who want to sort of uh, get a monopoly on the Curia. Um, the Catholic faith collect tithe from its adherents. That's good. A passive growth to the tithe. Um, as well as you can donate money to it for uh, indulgences is my understanding. Uh, Council of Trent mechanic, which used to be an event, but will now be its own kind of whole mechanic on its own within the Catholic, uh, the Holy See, the Curia mechanic. Um, so it's going to add some dynamics to the Protestant Reformation, which seems really cool. New Imperial Incident System that will um, just make Central Europe feel more alive and dynamic. So these Imperial Incidents seem crazy, and I am super excited about them. I think they had mentioned 13 in total. Um, they've really revealed 9 and gone over 8 is my understanding, but I could be wrong there. But these range from you know the Burgundian Inheritance to I imagine there's going to be one involving the um the reformation uh, i know that prussia is one the peasants wars and so forth so it sh should be pretty cool um, they made the decentralized and centralized branches of the imperial reforms out from the common reform so that is going to be sweet you're going to see a lot different um um uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Empires. The empire is going to look a lot different in, in various games and multiplayer. It's going to be fun because you're going to be able to mess around with a lot of this stuff. So hegemony status uh, mechanics for greatest of the great powers. This is going to be really interesting. So apparently it's supposed to make late game more interesting. Once you're just stomping everybody, you get various bonuses and setbacks for various things. Uh, for those of you who don't know, hegemony just basically means like number one in the world. You know, for example, the Cold War was between the hegemonic powers of the U.S. and um, the the Soviet Union and so forth. So, uh, Tears, the Defender of the Faith, seems really cool. Uh, poo poo on the low end, very strong on the high end, but very hard to maintain on the high end. So, definitely excited to see how the Defender of the Faith looks. Introduce a new heir, eh, not very useful unless you're, you know, uh, air, your guy's like 65 and you know for a fact you're about to get a PU, then just declare war. That's what I would do. But, I mean, you know. If you want to get out from somebody's um, dynasty, I suppose it could be useful for that. But 10 new Defender of the Faith events, including jihads for Muslim holy cities. So I actually had received a comment a while back saying that they were interested in jihads. And I think it was William Farmer. Um, oh, so here you go. Apparently there will be some events for it. So that's cool. 13 new events about papal tithe and curia treasury. Hussite church aspects. Hyped for the Hussite church. Hyped to defenestrate some heretics. Throw some, out, throw some Catholics out windows. Hussite is going to be sweet. I'm very excited about this. Institutionalized uh, Black Army government reform, um, which is for Hungary. Um, so basically, it's just a government reform for Hungary. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it has something to do with um, basically they're taking these rebel armies and making them into a standing army. And it's interesting. Uh, 
Revolutionary satellite state government reform. The revolutionary target can impose on its client states and enemies. Some of the characteristics of revolutionary republic, but a lower max revolutionary zeal and none of the benefits of being the revolutionary target. Interesting. At an imperial incident that triggers once the League War concludes. Okay, okay, so this is what I had mentioned about the um, imperial incident. So this is upon the conclusion of the League War. A majority of the HRA's provinces are owned by reformed princes, forcing the emperor to address their demands. Interesting. Okay, so regardless of who wins it, it seems like whoever um, is the dominant faith will um, have to make concessions to the heretics. So that's interesting. Adding events, adding um, flavor to the spread of revolutionary ideas in Europe and the colonies. Interesting. I'm always down for changes to revolution. Revolution was cool, but it was pretty cut and dry. Like, it generally would just happen. Like, the Ottomans were getting their teeth kicked in over and over again. They'd go bankrupt and go revolutionary. It seems like it might... Um, it seems like a buff. I don't know. Revolutionary was strong, but it was also kind of, like, not strong at the same time because, you know, you could get stuck with a... With a, a, a Republican leader that wasn't that good, but regardless, expanded mission tree for France, Brandenburg, Prussia, uh, Germany, and the whole HRE, the HRE tag that is, with unique branches for both tags. Very cool. Provence, Provence Switzerland, Crusader states, Knights, Epirus, Cyprus, Athens, and Jerusalem. Very cool. Uh, I wonder if it's like they get a Crusader state mission tree, like it's the same one for all of them. Regardless, this is cool. Epirus is going to be a new fun tag to play, as I'm sure of that. Added missions for Naples and the Two Sicilies. Excited for that one. Bohemian Mission Tree. I uh, believe they teased it. Yes, they did. So it seems like it's going to be a PU Central for a lot of these guys. Like um, Brandenburg, Prussia, Germany, France, Holy Roman Empire. A lot of those are going to be really heavy on the PUs, which I'm excited about. Now, new, pape, new Pope Man Mission Trees, including Kingdom of God, which might be a decision. I don't think it's in the Mission Tree. Uh, the Ideals of the Revolution now spread over provinces. So it's kind of like an institution. Um, to the best of my knowledge, the revolution begins in a province and kind of stems out and infects the local ones, if you will. Of course, harsh penalties on absolutist countries um, allowed you to choose support or oppose the revolutionaries in the revolution, the French Revolution disaster. Picking a side and winning will leave you stronger. Picking it and losing will, however, is not, however, advised. All right, cool. Players can now provoke rebels into revolting for extra strength. I think it's 50% strength is what they had announced in the dev diary, but that might have changed. Um, revolutionary zeal replaces absolutism mechanics for revolutionary countries so that's um yeah it, it's a little picture of a guillotine so that's kind of cool I'm, I'm curious how this actually looks because i'm not too familiar with it but um, if you do know leave a comment let me know added several new unique reforms for revolutionary republics or countries both republic and empire very cool revolutionary guard special units which are instead of giving you as much like morale and stuff they give you special units that you can recruit on behalf of the revolution um, that are super strong. So that's going to be really cool. I'm interested to see how like the new different government type or new uh, unit types will look. Now take over a torch of the re uh, revolutionary countries can now take over the torch of the revolution from the revolutionary target. Okay. So the revolutionary target is not necessarily the only revolutionary nation. Interesting. Decline of the Hanseatic League event. Very good. Oh, so here's the incidents. King in Prussia. Yes. PU subject joins empire incident. Okay, so this seems to be something that's kind of ubiquitous. It can happen whenever. Pope and the Imperial Incident. And the Empire. Pope and the Empire. Imperial Incident. I can't read, apparently. Question of Holstein. Imperial Incident. Switzerland and the Imperial and the Empire. Imperial Incident. Burgundy joins the Empire. Burgundian Inheritance. 21 missions for Lübeck. Peace Tree to spread the revolution. Very interesting. Saxon, Saxon Mission Tree was 16. Very good. Savoyard. Um, extended Genoese, that's nice. Estate agendas. So this is cool. I'm um, excited. Estates are going to be, goodness gracious, estates are going to be super, super complex and crazy, and I'm excited to get into it. I definitely hope you guys are as well. Um, anything that adds depth to estates is good in my opinion. Added an expanded Bavarian, Milanese, Hungarian, uh, several 18th century events, the Flower Wars, enhance the buildup to the revolution and make it more likely to happen in the country where they take place. Very cool. Uh, Dutch, Austrian, Serbian, Florence, uh, Italy, Genoa, Venice, Burgundy, and Provence mission trees. Very cool. Now the free features. So this is free to anybody who does not, does not necessarily own Emperor, but does have the 1.30 patch installed. 
Reworking the mercenary system. Uh, I'm very excited to see how this works. Um, it's kind of like CK2's mercenary system, if you've ever played with that, where you don't recruit units, you recruit companies, and uh, they have finite manpower. It's gonna. It seems like they're getting buffed early game and nerfed really hard late game to encourage standing armies, essentially. So that should be cool. Uh, overhauled and better integrated estates mechanics with privileges and agendas. Very cool. Corrupt, removed corruption from territories. God bless you, Johan. God bless you. Whole new government capacity mechanic states, TCs, and territories have different weights on this, right? So um, trade companies are now no longer, you know, 0% autonomy. Now they have various penalties associated with them to, um, you know, kind of, they were nerfed in a way, but it's just because territory from corrupt, corruption from territories was very overpowered and kind of crippled late game expansion. So like world conquests were more of a pain in the ass because of it. So I'm excited to see that go, and I'm excited to see how late game balance is uh, is going to be looking. Expand administration mechanic, which allows you to spend government reform progress to increase governing capacity, right? So governing capacity is the new, like, kind of state limit, if you will. So you can spend government reform, which you don't need government reform progress late game. You can spend it into increasing your governor governing capacity. So the lower your average autonomy, the more governing capacity you can get. Seems good. Um... Added an indication for who views you as a rival. So this is nice. Yes, this is like a, it'll show up. And it'll say this nation, their army, their navy, and whether or not they consider you a rival. So you can see at a quick glance, which is pretty nice. Um, you know, it just saves you a few clicks here and there. So any of those quality of life things are good with me. Added a new mission or a new option to allow people to change countries multiple times. Must be off for achievements. So, yes, basically they got rid of endgame tags. So you, if you want to do, you know... Ottomans form Byzantium form Rome you can do that now um so that's pretty cool but uh you can't get achievements but I mean that that's that's fine free cities are now enabled in the base game I did not know that that was not a base game thing uh so that's good I'm always down for them to be making things free to play government reform mechanics is now baseline while Darman Emperor unlock a fair amount of unique reforms okay Government reform is now into the base game because I think it was introduced in Dharma. So that's really cool. Dang, they're really going all out, man. Kudos to Paradox, giving away content. Uh, rework Dutch Revolt to include it, include a disaster. Very good. Yes, I freaking hate the Dutch Revolt. Three missions for Bulgaria, uh, 10 for Franconia, four for the French Duchies, five for Albania, five for Hanover, Brunswick, Brunswick, uh, Lundberg, Kallenberg, and four further missions for Hanover, six for... Six events about mercenary companies. Excited to see what those look like. Uh, eight free new missions for Italian minor states. I assume that this means, you know, like um, Bologna, Bologna, or however it's pronounced, Urbino, those sorts of guys. Uh, eight missions for Brittany, Flanders and Brabant, Palatinate. Uh, bonfire of the Vanities disaster that adapts and adds to the old self. <laughs> okay. Added Chinese, Hindustan, Bharat, and Mughal revolution flavor. What? Okay, so now you don't have to be European to go revolutionary. Interesting. Sorry, guys. I keep bumping my microphone. I'm a rookie. Crusader states, government type for Jerusalem. Very cool. Uh, Golden Ambrosian Republic, disaster for Milan, incorporating the existing events and adding eight new events, including events about the rise of Sforza and a potential military dictatorship. Interesting. That's really cool. So might make Milan. I already thought Milan was fun. I did my Mary Nostrum campaign with Milan. Check the playlists. But uh, yeah, that's cool. Hussite religion and associated flavor. So this is free to play. Very cool. Added Italian wars dynamic historical event beginning with a major. When a major power is at war with an Italian nation, enables special military companies and a triggered modifier for about 50 years for active participants. So that way it kind of like pushes you to. Um, unite Italy, so I like that. Added a uh, Juncker, uh, Stratocracy government reform, and uh, Legacy government available for Prussia if it becomes a republic. Goodness gracious. Generals become rulers. That is strange. Interesting. I'm going to try that out probably. Military dictatorship government reforms and Legacy government. Uh, rulers reign for life, and the best general succeeds on ruler death. Very cool. Uh, the Pazzi conspiracy event for Florence, Tuscany. Uh, not f not familiar with it. Protectorate Parliament government reform and legacy government for uh, English Commonwealth under Cromwell. Added Signora government reform. So this is a bunch of reforms. Uh, dynastic candidates in elections. 
Without a monarch skill, any monarch skill penalties? Nice, because it always never made sense to elect uh, somebody from your family, because they're literally always like a one zero zero or something stupid like that. Added a mission tree for Swabian miners, and uh, expanded tree for Swabian formables. Very good. Chain for concerning the succession of the Neobalts and throne in the 15th century. Interesting. So adding some flavor for Na uh, Naples. Sounds good. Uh, Non-OP starting government reform for Austria. Okay. <laughs> I'm curious to see what that's about. I, I know that they had mentioned it. I think it's, it might even guarantee them free Diplo points or something like that. Add an industrialization event or institution, which hits from 1750 onward. That's dope. I'm excited to see how industrialization works. And this is free, so that's really cool. Event surrounding the attempted Serene Neapolitan Republic, SPQN, in the 17th century. Better colors for most countries, revolutionary flags, God bless. Revolutionary flags were but ugly. Oh, some of them were. Added a state's privileges to the game. Added event for France that spawns the Duchy of Alençon, I think it's how it's pronounced. Alençon, something like that. After reconquering the prov province. Uh, mission tree for Croatia and Ragusa. Death Martian, break the chains. Absolutely. Several events surrounding the breakup between Saxony and Thuringia. Right, so Saxony is now, I think it's Messians, I think it's how it's pronounced, and uh, Thuringia, and Thuringia is under a personal union. So very interesting. Uh, Borgia papacy event chain covering the election of Rodrigo Borgia and the career of his son, Caesar. Three new missions for HRA republics to replace the ones... To become emperor. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, added two dynamic historical events about the Jews of Salonik. Very cool. Reworked the Black Army so it's now a mercenary company with reduced costs and extra discipline. So I think I had mentioned that earlier before. Uh, they're more of a stronger army and they'll be available specifically to Hungary. So Hungary, I think Hungary is going to be extremely strong in 1.30. Only time will tell though. The Observer can now access information on the ledger when it is locked or limited. So this is for multiplayer. Or, you know, Drew Dernal. But I don't know why you would lock your ledger. Um, unlocked 15 event pictures that were previously only for owners of Art of War. That's cool. Free to play. Optimized performance of Hindu monarch events. One day, whatever, something were eradicated. Added subject interaction for Golden Century users to block or allow AI subjects from, becoming, from using settlement growth. So this means they made it so you can't put your um, vassals can't randomly say, hey, I could be colonizing right now. But rather than doing that, I think I'm just going to put a colonist on my capital. <laughs> Added marine type of infantry. Very cool. Yep. So this is going to make it so these marines get on and off ships much faster and they take a lot more damage, but they get a foothold and then you can transport across your army if you're trying to cross a strait or something like that. Should be pretty cool. Uh, requires golden century or rule Britannia. Very cool. Custom nations now set up how they want their units to look from the player sprite pack. State Macro Builder, very interesting to see about this. I think it shows, um, you know, you can see edicts, you can see state development, you can see state culture, you can see state, um, you know, holy orders and all that stuff. Very interesting. Go to button in events, very nice. War taxes is now a toggle that costs two mil a month if you are at war. Very interesting. I like that. So it's not 50 a year, so it's actually cheaper then, right? 50 every two years so what is that i don't know i can't do math 25 a month so it's about the same then game balance state house manufacturer that gives lowered statewide governance cost and lower minimum cap on autonomy can only have one per state very interesting um, impressment office manufacturer 250 sailor boost uh, ramparts manufacturer gives a hostile attrition and 15 percent local defensiveness i like that um Soldier Workhouse Manufacturing gives 750 manpower and extra 750 in food provinces. So this is really interesting because this is a direct buff to manpower as a result of the nerf to mercenaries, which mercenary changes are essentially a, mer a nerf overall. Expelling minority minorities and colonies is now use the Expel Minorities Cost Modifier only and no extra define on the colonial maintenance. Coring costs can no longer be below one power. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, all created countries should now start with proper state setup. All war reparation expenses now taken into account in the balance estimation. Trade company bonuses on production. The trade note is now clear to see, and they are now only applied to non-TC provinces stronger in the game. End game. Very good. Siphoning money from subject will not count subsidies. Bummer. 
Pirates no longer considered to be a monopoly and a trade node. Really? What do you mean? If you have like over 50%, you still can't get a monopoly? Curious how that works. Looting and blockades are now actually expenses for the target country. This I'm excited about because I'm a big fan of looting and uh, blockading for, um, you know, war score. But now it actually makes sense to do it to hurt their, hurt their economy. So you can see, uh, I guess you can't see, this is how far down we are from the bottom. So we have a lot to go over. This is going to be a longer video. I hope you guys are okay with it. If you are, you know, share your support, leave a like and all that. I appreciate a good thumbs up here and there. Added two new buildings for coastal provinces, coastal defense and naval battery, which I think has something to do with it gives you a buff to naval combat, but I might be wrong. Trade company investments are now a bit cheaper. Very good. Investment tier one and two got buffed to 50 and 100. Very good. Trade company investment tier three now gives two marine, force limit, and lowered local autonomy cap in the entire region can now build one tier three investment in every region. Very good. Uh, removes the cap on reform progress. Oh, so the, okay. Okay, so now you can use that for your uh, governing capacity. Interesting. Remove tech requirement for war against the world CB. <laughs> good. Good. So I'm curious if that's like a direct giant buff to pirate republics because war against the world, for those of you who don't know, is essentially just a reskin of imperialism. So I'm curious um, what that actually translates to. Revolutionary empires no longer have access to estates. Didn't know they didn't. Now that I'm thinking of it. Okay. Um, a country that has the mandate of heaven will now start at 60 meritocracy rather than zero. Republics can get 100% reform progress with 100% retweet. I don't know what RT stands for. A Republican tradition. Uh, Prussian Republic and Prussian monarchy reforms now give 50% governing capacity. Pirate Republics now have 75% more governing costs. Interesting. Penalty of militarized society now ticks in from being over governing capacity. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. Being big and tall, your military militarization is going to go down. Or big and wide, I mean. Uh, mer Merchant Republics no longer has a hard-coded limit of 20 provinces. Instead, they have a higher governing cost for their provinces. Makes sense. I thought that the hard limit of 20 provinces was kind of corny anyway. So... Change the effects of the Council of the Indies to be something more appropriate. Event for the Pirate Republics and Revolutionary Satellites. Um, as a multi-year council, caretaker committee, Regency 222, take over the Republican tradition. If Republican tradition is below 20, block elections from happening until Republican tradition arise, rises over 50. So this is a direct nerf to uh, Pirate Republics because you used to just re-elect them and then you'd have zero Republican tradition and you would just like hope that you never lost ability. And then you just have a 666 until he died, but it looks like that's not going to happen anymore. So, Centers of religious and con um, Center of Reformation conversion speed is now affected by reform desire. So hopefully there's more ways to affect reform desire. That'd be pretty cool. Christian Centers of Reformation now base conversion lowered from lowered to two from five. So it looks like it's going to slow down the reformation. So that's pretty cool. It's just uh, so it frees up a lot more time for things to happen. So that's cool. Um, uh, scaling 50% drill loss for professionalism. Engaged ships will now fire each day instead of be being randomly selected. Uh, increased regiment drill modifiers are taken from 25 to 10. Interesting. So they nerfed drill. Hmm. Not sure how I feel about that one. Reduced yearly drill decay. Uh, now have a base chance of disengaging when demoralized. So now you don't lose like your entire fleet whenever you get into a bad fight or like if your fleet is protecting trade, now they'll actually run away. Uh, revolts can now get uh, fractions of regiment contributions from the provinces instead of always being forced to a minimum one. Uh, always away minimum one. I don't know what that means really. Mercenaries can no longer be recruited during bankruptcy. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, made attrition modifiers apply after supply limit checks and supply limit attrition is a bit more forgiving. I feel like supply limit was wonky at certain parts especially early game so i'm interested to see how that affects balance arrival attrition is now applied applied always when out of range in open seas both for navy and with any loaded armies amount of ships to blockade each development is now reduced to 50 percent of before all non-supply related sources of attrition is ignored on friendly territory interesting so what does that mean then 
non-supply related. So does it mean like if it's mountains, you don't get the attrition in your friendly territory anymore? Like if there's monsoons or something. So that's that seems like a, a nice little fix. Force march now only applies penalty if the unit is actually moving, so you don't have to micro it on and off. Only applies penalty if the unit is actually moving. I'm not, I wonder if that means like a morale, the morale redo. Anyways. War and peace, small changes to revolutionary war goals. Okay. All countries can now crush revolutions, even if it's a republic or theocrats. Very cool. You can now no longer support the independence of a subject if it's one of your allies. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Your allies. You no longer stack wipe an army through overrun mechanic if they have enough men to fill a full combat with 30k, which, I mean, it may happen a couple times late game, but it, I, this is... You know, I don't think this is very much. It makes sense. So if they fill the combat with, you can't overrun them. That doesn't make sense. Um, we'll, we'll see how that affects late game. Oops. No. I clicked off of it. Let's get back down there. Okay. So. Um, you can now no longer adapt template to remove shattered retreat. Oh, that's a little exploit I didn't know about. Wars declared on a colonial nation. Well, now make the overlord of the colonial nation automatically discover your capital. That makes sense. Emperor only needs to positive relations with the target to enforce peace within the empire. So that's a huge one. Um, if you have, you know, two OPMs fighting out and you know one of them is going to annex the other one, you can enforce peace now, uh, which would also make, you know, the Reformation, all that stuff much more manageable. I think this is definitely a buff to the emperor. So it's exciting. Subjects of allies occupying or being electors will no longer block dismantling HRE. Oh, right. Yeah. So this is funny. Um, yeah. The dismantle HRE mechanic. I remember one time I was trying to do it and um, one of my allies capital was occupied by rebels and I couldn't see it because it was, it was Cologne and it had a really tiny little sliver of a capital. And I'm so confused. I couldn't do it. And then they ended up having to seize their capital back. Um, it doesn't look like that's changing, but um, we'll see. Um, replace blockade percentage short with uh, economical impact from war column war overview very cool AI desire for peace from threatened mandate is now halved subjects now will get reduced liberty desire if being given land in a peace deal I love this I love this a lot they'll be extra happy if you give them one of their cores back love it fabricate games should be 50% more expensive within the HRE so instead of 20 it will cost 30 for your first province and then 40 and so on Naval combat under the hood has been overhauled and ships now flee in combat. Combat shouldn't be all, any more all or nothing. I know Grugi had said that, expi that those words explicitly in his uh, most recent um, uh, video on YouTube, so that's cool. AI will now get 15% missionary maintenance cost on hard difficulty and 30% on uh, very hard. Lucky Nations will now get 10% missionary maintenance. I love Lucky Nations. Trading cities or trade leagues will now initiate, will not initiate alliances and are very much against the concept. Oh, so that's a nerf to trade, trade leagues. So what I'm taking from this is trade leagues will exclusively be defensive alliances that you cannot get allies outside of them. Very cool. I wonder if they'll keep their alliances that they already have when they enter. It's hard to say. Nordic ruler legacy. As first idea, which gives 10% shock damage. Very cool. Um, cost based on distance to target to move capital. Really? Added cost based on distance to target to move capital. You guys better not be making it harder to move your capital. I swear. Paradox. We're going to have a fight. I'm curious what this means. If you're trying to move your capital to the new world, does it say like, oh, this is really big distance. This is like an extra 300 admin? Because I hope not. And we'll see. Age now affects leader's chance to die slightly. However, it will now ignore, be ignored. Is, this is now ignored by monarchs, meaning they won't double dip as much of the death is just hanging around like they did before. That's good. I, I hate... Uh, it seems like my rulers would randomly die in their 30s when they were a general, even if they weren't leading an army. So um, this is a change I'm good about. All instances of possible manpower modifiers have been replaced with manpower modifier. Okay. As we now have TCs everywhere, propagate religion is now limited to only outside of Europe. 
Okay, that makes sense. Uh, propagate religion. So yes, for those of you who don't know, if you're playing in Europe, you can set up a trade company in Britain. Um, so that'll be cool. Attacking HRE Prince as the Emperor under <laughs> Eviger Langfried, Landfried. I don't know how to say that. Landfried now counts as attacking a free city with negative three step hit and AE penalty. Oh, okay. So you cannot attack. I'm assuming that this is a um, this is a, a a reform. I'm not sure. Banners now start at full strength. Very cool. Buffed Korean idea. Uh, to give 10% ship durability like the similarly themed Japanese idea does since Korea should definitely not have less durable ships than Japan. Very cool. Increase the requirement for mission to sail the, set sail the turtle ships to reflect this. Can now build Streltsy through the macro builder. Uh, it costs manpower and money. The Streltsy spawned... Oh, it costs manpower now? Hmm. The Streltsy spawned from the Russian government is still free though. So you can build more Streltsy? Interesting. So it seems like that's a buff for Russia. Changing government reforms now cost 50 reform instead of 200, I think it was before. So, I'm just, hmm. This seems really strange. I'm really crazy. I'm really thinking about, like, how all this, um, all this balance is going to look. We'll see. Estates and loyalty and influence have now been integrated more into different mechanics in the game. Estate disaster will now tick up a lot slower, which is, which it is easier to encounter them and harder to deal with them in the new estate system. Okay. Um, if we go land free now, no longer lock you out from declaring war entirely. Right. So this was the one that disallowed internal HRE wars. So you'll still be able to do it. Um, but you just lose stab. Apparently generals are now taught courage and will never be, and will be in the first wave when using automatic transports. I love that. I hated that if you automatically transport it and you had like 10 transports and 12 men, it would take 10 and it would leave two men, two units behind with your general. So that's good. Governor's general mansion will now give 2% Marine force limit. Uh, Granada in succession now requires a uh, Nasarid air to not happen. Have the attrition for monsoons. Eh, that's fair. Monsoons are overpowered. Have the yearly drill decay of armies not drilling. Hindu events giving monarch points are now far less frequent, making being a Hindu less of a monarch point farming scheme. Okay. Leaving the empire reduces imperial authority, as it should. Uh, Marathas and Rajputs now have a base of 10 influence. That's nice. Getting the Rajputs influential is kind of annoying sometimes, so I like that. Mercenary regiments now no longer disband when taking damage at zero strength. Okay. Oh, right. I remember that, yeah. So if you had um, like 10 um, mercenaries and then they would go into a fight and they would just get spanked, you would leave and you'd only have like three units left. <laughs> so that was weird if they got overrun. Um, Merchant Republics now only form trade leagues with OPMs that are in a trade node that they have at least 1% trade power in. Genoa may now no longer form a trade league with Hamburg. Makes sense. That totally makes sense. Uh, missionary maintenance is now a lot cheaper. Yes, maybe my maybe my um, <laughs> my AI vassals will now convert morale recovery penalty of forced march uh, now applies actually now only applies while actually moving no need no need to any more to micro or toggle it on or off for a monthly tick I do that a lot I, I micro the monthly tick so I'm glad to hear that that's getting changed no uh, longer restricted to 50% dev must be on continent to move capital so that's what it is you can move your capital across the to another country to another um continent but it costs a lot more so i think that's a fair change for balance provinces belong to trade companies now have 80% local autonomy i had mentioned that before rebalance um, various sp spread modifiers and institutions from printing press onwards especially manufacturers and enlightenment to try to allow for a more technological rift in the light game Speak for yourself, man. Man manufacturers is okay, but enlightenment, like try getting the enlightenment when you're like the Moogles or something. Forget about it. I'll finish the game with 50% tech cost. Uh reduced coastline development cost penalty to 15. I think it was 25 before. Reduced arid and tropical development to 10. So I think it was 25. Regiment being transported in uh open sea now takes 10% attrition. Goodness gracious. That's a uh, hefty. Set the cap for reduction of mana points gained for raising a province due to higher miltech levels to 80%, i.e. gain 5 mana raise per dev raised rather than 20%, gain 20 mana per dev raised. The cap will now be reached at tech 23 rather than tech 8. Okay. 
So it seems like a little bit of a nerf to hordes. They're pretty overpowered. Subjects, um, part of the HRE can now add provinces. If they are the overlord, it's already part of the empire. So I like that. Um, that used to be really annoying because it would you you know get an HRE prince who had a vassal outside of the HRE, but they would not have their they would not be added to the HRE. So it was always a pain. So I'm glad to hear that. Swapping government type uh, via event will now cost four reform tiers if you are a republic and otherwise two tiers. Okay. Switched out max states with new uh, mechanic called governing capacity. Each province develops becomes weight a weight upon the government and manage it and to manage with and deal with. So basically, you just you know, yeah. So it gets more expensive to deal with a, a a more wide nation later on. Territories no longer cause corruption. Territories are limited to ninety local autonomy instead of seventy five. Um, the ability of the shogun. To have a prince daimyo is now unique to so. Other pirate republics will now become regular daimyos. Hmm. Pirate daimyo. Okay, cool. The um, special unique Cossacks Rajputs Marines and Revolutionary Guard will now be built through construction in a province, meaning they will take a little bit of time. Okay. Now trade companies for the entire world. Love it. Tier 1, 2 trade investments are now 200 and 400. Um... Now only one tier three can be built per region. Nobody really builds tier threes that I know of anyways. Um, so hopefully they got buffed. We'll see. Um, trade companies now take 50% governing capacity. Um, so they used to take nothing. So it's even more of a nerf, I think. Because they used to just be like a free state, basically. Trade companies upgraded to work with local autonomy instead of having their penalties hacked to a local modifier, right? Um, war taxes modifier... Uh, war taxes modifier for custom nation now limited to two levels of 50 and 100 so you can get free war taxes that's cool war tax is now toggable yep we talked about that war of the roses now requires a plantagenet york or lancaster to be the heir to not happen um when attacking attaching to your own armies they will now walk with the slowest move oh thank god oh my gosh this is annoying uh, yeah you'll like have two armies and then you'll have them oh wait this does not apply if an ally attaches you to avoid where AI screws over your movement speed. Interesting. Okay. So basically it's making it so you don't like send in a little three stack with a high tier general before the smaller, the bigger stacks get in there or something like that. Um, now get the revolution or the French revolutionary disaster by having a larger army or higher development than everyone else in Europe. Very cool. Demand unlawful territory is now set to the overlord of a subject. I like that. Now get a passive spy network effects for colonial nations as well. I like that. Removed power cost from expelling minorities. Definitely like that. Rebels now scale much linearly, much more linearly with a player possible force limit, force limit in a province. Um, so, hmm. I'm not sure what exactly that translates to, but generally high dev provinces produce lots of rebels, so that's annoying. Regardless, I hate rebels. <laughs> a province added to a trade company is now immediately removed from the empire. Oh, right, that's cool. Monopoly will um, now actually impact privateers. Monopoly share will now actually impact privateers. Okay, so maybe it's kind of a penalty for having too many privateers on a trade node. Colonizing adjacent to a home area will now convert religion culture in the TC. Lex Siberia. All right. Hmm, interesting. The elected emperor can always join the empire. I thought they always could anyways, but okay. The empire is now dismantled if it is no longer a monarchy after being inheritable. Ah, so somebody had talked about this. So you can't go like revolutionary or something. Interesting. Subjects can no longer have their VCs progress. Okay. Recruiting Act policy now gives Marines. Cool. Portugal gets Marines. Pioneer policy, uh, also 5% colonist placement chance. I don't know what that means. Fixed so decay cannot be negative for traditions. Okay. I like that. Spell minorities are now far harder to convert. Ooh, interesting. So it's like they're, they're safe haven. Can't convert them. Makes sense. Expel minorities no longer change the religion of the culture of origin but instead moves the development gained in the target away from the origin okay so it lowers the development you you're transferring to development which makes sense you're moving the people 
not the religious, the religion, because there's still going to be people that linger. So I don't know. It makes sense uh, for role play purposes. So, you know, decreasing autonomy now removes the recent uprising modifier from the province. Okay. So if you had a recent uprising and you really decrease the autonomy, you can get more rebels. Oh, so that kind of fixes the, uh, uh, the recent uprising bug that you can use with, um, absolutism. It's not a bug, but a little like get the particularists. Hmm. Interesting. I'm curious how that's going to affect that. Buffed yearly absolutism gain across the board. Nice. I like that. And admin efficiency is capped at 90. Sorry, Moogles. No more free courts for you. Absolutism is now only providing up to 30% admin efficiency down from 40. So they nerfed absolutism flat out, right? Interesting. A province and a trade company cannot be added to the HRE. Makes sense. Added uh, trade companies to the entire world, minus colonial regions. Trade companies can now create anywhere as long as you... As it's now your super... I think it means not your super region. No continent switching anymore for TCs. Trade companies now have 90% autonomy penalty. But uh, reduced effect on trading things. Gotcha. So AI diplomacy made AI less likely to accept trade charters in some super regions. Okay, so just cleaning up border gore and all that stuff. AI Emperor will now always attempt to make all who want to be free cities free cities. That's good. More free cities, more imperial authority, more reforms, more dynamic HRE. I'm a fan of that. AI will now respond to diplomatic actions immediately the same day instead of waiting a day in circumstances changing, causing problems. This makes me sad. So... This fixes a couple of exploits that I like to use to kind of finagle my way around AI alliances. You can now no longer call them into multiple wars, and now you can, or at least not that I'm aware of, and you can no longer call them into war on promise of territory and then say, actually, I want all these provinces as well, and then let them join the war. So we'll see. Ugh, keep on clicking off that. Where are we at here? Okay. Added AI waiting to government reforms so that the AI will be more likely to pick up unique reforms is eligible for, and in some cases will not pick reforms that will give it little benefit. So I like that. Make the AI smarter. AI more likely to budget money uh, for upgrading center of trade. Very good. Yeah, they never upgrade center of trade. Made AI more likely to upgrade center of trade and profitable trade nodes. Makes sense. Only colonizers will try to charter company. I like that a lot. AI is now much better at understanding benefits of manufacturers, especially those of other types. I like that a lot. No longer debased currency if it has less than 10,000 gold. Okay. Uh, AI will now reduce war exhaustion when at war as well. Ooh, so you can really destroy an AI diplotech. You uh, will occupy them and just like ravage them with war exhaustion. It makes sense. AI will boost the hell out of those states when all reforms are enacted. Uh, increase the priority of the AI science to protecting its own lands. <laughs> That's totally makes sense. No more base races. Those base races are so annoying, especially because the AI has a tendency to win sieges that it shouldn't. Uh, large AI nations now no longer voluntarily implode from reforming into merchant republics and releasing an unrealistic amount of vassals. Yeah, that's always dumb. Like when Oi Rot randomly forms into a merchant republic and releases like seven free cities, or I mean trade cities. Uh, added manager state AI settings. Cool. Uh, interface. So this is, man, my eyes. This is going to be a really long video. We're already 43 minutes into this recording. And, oh, okay. A lot of these are pictures. Okay. No, we're good. So it looks like we're, we're, we're almost done. We're good. Oof. Still, hope you guys are enjoying the long episode. Uh, figured I might as well give you guys a little more content to look forward to before we start uh, really getting into it. Don't forget, we're going to be streaming um, Emperor this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Um, I think it's noon central time, so uh, I think it's 17, 1800 central European um, for five hours, Saturday and Sunday. We're going to be playing some EU4. There's going to be a lot of really great creators there, so don't forget to follow me on Twitch over there and uh, check that out. So anyways, interface added rebel army size to handle rebel to handle rebels interface love that added rebel army signs in the outliner love that uh, button in the military view to detach a general from the unit he is attached to so like a send home button i like that can so that way you can like send him home and then immediately disband him if you need to get rid of him and he's attached to an army 
Continue displaying the reform's progress after enacting the last reform. I like that. In the declare war window, a warning will appear if you have ships out of, out of port. Ooh, I like that. There's a lot of little uh, light ship navies that I have had sunk due to declaring war. And like my guys are sitting out there on top of their heavies for, and I didn't realize it. When declaring war, you will now get detailed list of the two sides' forces. No more ledger. Uh, if playing with a locked limited ledger, you need to infiltrate administration. Okay, very cool. So it makes it a little more useful. Basically, it tells you the forces on either side when preparing for the war. So that's cool. The reform progress label inside your progress bar will now show the current amount of reform progress, even if all reforms are enacted. I love that. That's good. Boost state button. Core all button to the stability view. I like that a lot. That's going to make late game conquests a lot nicer. Save you the click. Save your mouse, right? Don't wear your mouse out. You can now review other countries' military and their diplomacy interface instead of having to go all the way through the ledger, right? So you just right-click them. And it says, okay, they have this many um, infantry cav and cannons. Very nice. And this is how much manpower they have in store. Um, can now view your subject's mission tree. Love Love, 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 love. Like one of the best changes of the, of the patch. Thank you, Paradox. Convert, covert interactions are now ordered based on uh, when they would get unlocked by Diptech. Uh, oh, right. So in the actual uh, diplomacy tab. Makes sense. Will now no longer show minimum auto autonomy of the country modifier screen. And now uh, show local development can... Will now show... Province development on fabricate fabricate claim interface. I usually do like that. Just click on it and then X C to claim fabricate claims. But yes, that's nice because then it can show you which ones have the highest dev, so you can get your claims. So that makes sense. Uh, little uh, drill icon, general selection interface for generals who are drilling their armies. Okay, nice. In uh, declare war interface, allies of the target, um, allies of the target that are a coalition against the player are highlighted with an extra icon next to the entry. Nice. So it actually says, hey, this person's in a coalition against you. Battle prediction icon will now consider the order that units are updated to see if the units will be in the same province at the same time. Thank you. Oh my gosh. This makes Speed 5 Wars a lot easier. Because <laughs> if you're getting in the same time and then they randomly get away because they're first in the order for some reason. Um, adds military access map mode. I like that. That's uh, That might be useful because otherwise you have to like just hover over all of them and read a bunch. So it's always more map modes is better. Altered the super region group to by splitting of Africa and South America, moving some regions between super regions and renaming some super regions. Very cool. Cardinals will now be shown on the religious map mode. I like that as well. Um, let's see here. Where are we at? Where are we at? Here we go. Um, selecting a province in the trade goods map mode now hides all of the icons of other trade nodes. And only the one selected shows, so that's cool. Trade goods map mode now fades out the icons when zooming to be able to clearly see the colors of the provinces. Okay, so it's just ease of access, I like that. Revolutionary map mode, makes sense, they're gonna need that. Um, clicking revolutionary target now centers the map on the center that switches map mode to the revolution. Ah, okay. Uh, Imperial map. So it seems like they're really putting a lot of effort into making the revolution a lot more interesting. So I like that. Imperial map mode no longer breaks if no valid emperor, where there's like all the uh, wasteland is purple. Made a tooltip. Uh, tooltips are fun. I like tooltips. Made a better tooltip uh, that you can only have one specific trade company investment in a region. Prepare for war now describes its exact effect, the plus 20. Uh, yearly change of opinion is now summarized in the opinion tooltip. So it'll say like minus three, minus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, minus six. And then it'll say like total change of minus one at the year or whatever. Like I didn't actually do the math, but now shows higher date and age of generals and admirals in the tooltip. Join the empire. Trying to join the empire will now list all reasons why you can't join. Nice. Uh, the build two unit buttons will always show force limit now. I like that. I used to have to hit B to bring up my macro builder to check that before, so that's nice. Added a tooltip and highlight for the option execute the bailiff, the event uh, 710, an event 710 for republics, emperors of China. Okay, so just some flavor. Improved tooltip for when at war and trying to charter a trade company. Uh, forts on borders of rivals with. Reduction now has a correct tooltip in building UI. Cool. Fixed uh, cell ship tooltip. Um, talking about 
sending gifts when target is bankrupt or in debt <laughs> uh fix the tool ish tooltip issue we're flipping into a new world with flipping into a new world nation uh country effect on garrison growth is now shown in tooltips cool uh inuit sprites now use guns as technology advances that makes sense catholic league units now directly enables tier 2 artillery sprites for the papal states using the using the pax tier 2 papal infantry sprite Comes a Pirate Republic via the decision will apply appropriate unit models. Other add reform desire in the Curie view. I like that. Um, reform desire is going to be a lot more important now, so I think it's uh, it makes sense to be there. Grant free city uh, diplomatic action in the macro builder. So that's nice. You can just immediately sick. Okay, who wants to be a free city? Boom. Oh, two people. Let's add them. Get that imperial authority. I like it. Streamline macro builder changes. Good stuff. Added unique startup screens to Byzantium, Naples, and Genoa. Okay, unique startup screens for various countries. Very good. Uh, banner state interface will now allow you to raise as many banners as that country can support. So that's cool. Can now ask for gold uh, until acceptance of AI in peace when using shift left mouse button, shift right mouse button, shift right mouse button. Now it does maximum unit. So now you can click shift click. And it'll say, okay, they would only accept, you know, seven clicks. So it just does it seven clicks instead of 25. So that's cool. Can now click the map to select provinces for threat and war action. I like that. Um, can now click the map for select provinces, fabricate claim. I like that. Um, you can now pick what unit you will attach your army to. Ah, so if there's a big stack. HRE League members now have a scroll bar if there are enough of them. <laughs> Very good. Scroll bar. Uh, offer loan can now be set better numbers in the interface decimal increment um cool promote military recruitment to oh it's just renamed promote military recruitment increased enlistment en enlistment to get a little bit smaller revised startup screen for france cool engage disengage demoralize and reserve ships cool uh special regiments are now built through macro builder with other land units right you can now get warning for cap at mana when you are three months away from cap. When you hit hard cap, the alert goes red. I like that a lot. You can now click on a map to select provinces for subject interactions. Uh, like if you want to give them your province, you just like click, 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 click over here. I like that. Um, claims alert now shows when claims will expire as well. That's good. Uh, alert when you can use a Muslim piety action. A lot of uh, legalism and mysticism has been wasted in the past from that, so that's good. Tech and idea alert will now turn red if their grace period where innovativeness might expire. That's good. Now mass build units using shift control. Shift or control when clicking out units. So you like say, oh, okay, click. I want to make units, uh, infantry. Shift, click, makes 10 of them with the macro builder. Beautiful. That's something that should have been in there a long time ago. I'm really glad they put that in. Diplomat anti-coalition macro builder a little bit smarter so it doesn't just like take some random guy and crank him all the way up to 100. I like that. Siege chance is now same display in all UI. Very good. Now it shows other country corruption on ledger. I like that. No, you can just click on them, right? I'll go to their diplomatic map mode. Uh, now detach the leader as well when detaching a siege force by holding shift. So you hold down shift and D and it'll leave the leader. I like that. Revoking a free city now warns you or reduce uh, imperial authority by five. Fixed occupation text clipping. Fixed color of discipline. Uh, 100 Greater than 100% in the military screen. Economic ledger now should always use the month's data from province incomes. Very good. Coal is now hidden in the ledger until discovered. Clarifies that the base tax income is the yearly tax income. Improvise the dialogue for offering loans to another nation. And a um, bunch of things like this modifiers and effects so thoughts um wow a lot there's a lot going on here uh this episode's this video has already been super long i'm going to have to go back through and add some stuff to make sure that it's easier for you guys to see what's going on but um long story short emperor adds so much like it's it's eu4 is going to be a very different europe specifically is going to be a very different game so i'm excited and I hope you guys are too. Um, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking about these changes. And if there's certain things that you're super excited for or things that you maybe, you know, things that you object to. I'm definitely curious about the community's interest and in their feedback on what's going on. So 
I think that's going to do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please share your support. Leave a like like I had asked before. Subscribe if you want to see that 1.30 content coming this weekend and the following weeks. Plenty to be coming. Um, hope you guys are excited for that. And uh, if you want to ding the bell, it'll send you a notification every time we upload. That's the best way to keep up to date with everything that we've got going on on the channel. Um, we do have a Discord as well. Community Discord with a uh, community and uh, official multiplayers every week. And uh, that's going to be linked below as well as my Patreon. So if you like what I do and you want to support me financially, those are going to be linked in the description below. And with all that being said, this is Chewy Shoe, and I will catch you guys later. A big special thanks to my new supporter, John Thompson, as well as my other two top supporters, Palmer and Bloodbound. Also, thank you to Jonathan Crane, Jaron Clampett, Lambda Driver, Corbett Gaming, Michael Walker, Zwayhander, William Reed, Gregory the Bitter Steel, Christopher Pegolo, and Airborne Animal 7. I appreciate you guys very much. Don't forget to check out the series we have linked on the left and right, and don't forget to subscribe.